Well, hello once again, my fellow herpers, my fellow leopard gecko lovers. How you doing? I'm John Hoxton, as if you didn't know that. And I am here with a follow-up video to the last one. Uh, this is the Firebolt Clown Cross Mail debacle. I'm not going to call it a debacle because I accepted the animal. And um, so we'll just... We'll just call it what it is, but I am I am going to talk about a few things about that um, because I've thought about it over the last couple of days, and uh, I'm okay with letting letting go where I got the animal from, so I'm not too worried about it. But um, as you know, the options that I had that I had outlined for myself anyway were to keep the animal trade it for something that I need um, or start another project and buy animals to pair with it. So I thought long and hard about it and um, talked to Denise Ray. Thank you, Denise, for um, having the conversation with me. But she was very, very nice enough to offer kind of like a breeding loan kind of deal uh, where I would send her the male and she'd pair it up with some of her females and then we would split the offspring. And I thought that was a very tremendously generous offer and uh, I truly do appreciate it. But I have decided to go in a different direction. It always seems to end up costing me money, doesn't it? Or costing whatever in reptiles in general, especially if you're breeding animals, it seems like most of the decisions you make end up costing you money. So I was prepared for this. Not not as much as I thought I was, but it is what it is. So I dug around Morph Market and um, I found some animals. Actually, I made a really good deal with this, this uh, person. Um, and I'll tell you who that is here in a second. And um, I was very satisfied with the communication, very satisfied with the animals, the way they look anyway. And um, so I'm going to squeeze some of these animals into a couple different projects. And I haven't mentioned the name of this project because uh, the one specific project uh, that I have kind of been keeping mum a little bit, but you've seen the animals I've been bringing in for it, so you just don't know the name of the project yet, which I'll give you that today. Um, I'm just not a big project namer, but I think this is such a specific look to a leopard gecko that it's appropriate to give it a name. And it, it, it actually is – the name is very appropriate for the project. I just – I think it's such a cool name. So um, with that being said, I hope you guys are doing well and gals are doing well. And um, it's been rainy here been raining for like four days in a row so i don't know how it is where you guys live but um it's kind of kind of crappy weather um congratulations to frank over at geeky gecko creations for eclipsing the 100,000 subscriber mark kudos uh frank and i are going to get together at some point in the near future and we're going to do some collabs collabs collaborations collabs whatever you want to call them um don't know what those are going to look like yet, but we're going to hash out the details and uh, hopefully it'll be a, reg a regular thing. Maybe it'll be a weekly thing. Who knows? Who knows? And um, for some of the comments and some of the videos and, you know, some of the feedback from both of our channels, I just I have a feeling that some of the other collabs coming down the road, not just with Frank, uh, but possibly with Denise, if you're watching, and others, you know, maybe we can do some kind of a round table kind of thing every couple of weeks or once a month or, you know, whatever the deal is. Um, but it's exciting times. And I, I really, I really truly believe, and I know Frank does, and I know others do that we need to come together as a group and we need to support each other and we need to push this community forward, this culture forward, um, put it out in the forefront. Let's make leopard geckos great again. So, I personally just in the in northern Ohio I just I feel like there's a lot of apathy 
when it comes to reptiles, um, especially with certain reptiles. And it seems like right now leopard geckos are kind of the redheaded stepchild. So I apologize to any redheaded stepchilds that are out there. I don't, I don't mean it personally, but just using it as a phrase. I want to change that. I want to, I know Frank does and I know others do. I want to make them exciting, fun, you know, let's eclipse the ball python people. You know, for whatever reason, ball pythons just took off and they have just totally taken over all the reptile shows. I mean, you go to any show, even a local show, Tinley, whatever, it is freaking ball pythons everywhere. And I am not bashing ball python keepers nor ball pythons. It, they are just not my thing. So, uh, but kudos to those guys and gals because they have done a tremendous job at putting the limelight on the animals that they love. So let's figure something out. Let's get leopard geckos back into the top echelon of sought after reptiles. So let's make it happen. Make it so. Oh, I was going to do a Beavis and Butthead impression, but save that for another video. So, okay. Uh, with that being said, Moving on. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you remember from last time, um, this is a beautiful firebolt clown cross male um, that I received as compensation for two of the three animals that were sold out from underneath me. Uh, with that whole snafu. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, please go back and do the last video and watch the last video. Um, so since I couldn't get my money back uh, at no fault of my own, I accepted this mail because this was the nicest looking animal that was presented to me. And um, I didn't get the impression that this person wanted to send me other pictures of other animals that they may have as holdbacks. Like it was either this or the stuff that they had on morph market. And there was only eight animals that were non pet geckos, none of which um, stacked up to this animal or were appropriate for any of my projects. So, um, but I did just so you know, I got this from LM geckos, Lori Mitchell uh, over in Massachusetts so there are the cats out of the bag. I have nothing against Lori personally, and I have nothing against her animals. She has beautiful animals. It's just um, I'm just having to scramble to either set myself, not set myself back two or three generations to complete some kind of a progress on a project. So I'm, I'm basically having to form a project around this specific animal because I have nothing, absolutely nothing to pair it with that makes sense for me. I just don't want to pair animals together just to have babies, um, you know, to try to recuperate some of the loss kind of. So, so again, thank you, Denise, for offering to um, do the breeding loan. But I did pick up four animals. I put a deposit on four animals. Um, I'm probably going to have them delivered here in the next 10 days or two weeks or so. Because um, the funds are a little low right now, but I'll have it by then. And um, this was a deal, a too good of a deal to pass up. It's They aren't exactly the animals that I wanted, but they they fit well enough that I'm not going to set myself back a whole lot as far as time goes. So beautiful male firebolt clown cross and as you know I'm big in green I love and if you know me from back in the mid late 2000s green was my green was my thing I came close to making an all green gecko um, so that, that's kind of the direction I'm going again um, so every animal that I get has to have some amount or a significant amount of green in it um, so the project that I'm working on is, it's called Black Olive. I know, right? That's pretty cool. Easy to remember. 
Black Olive. So up there with Black Knights, Black Pearls, now we have Black Olive. So the goal is to create an all green gecko, regardless of the uh, color green. It could be preferably darker green, like an army green. That's the goal, uh, with an all black tail. So the Black Olive Project, the end goal is to consistently produce solid green animals or mostly green animals with black tails, like kind of like a carrot tail would be on, you know, tangerines or other animals, um, but black. No yellow, no orange, no nothing, just green and black. So with that being said, um, I'll do a little refresher real quick here. Um, some of the animals I purchased earlier to fit into that black olive project um, was this male. Um, as you can see, in this picture anyway, why I was attracted to this particular adult male, um, because it's got a very, very, almost a full black tail. It's got a little bit of, you know, still lightness in it, but there's no orange, no yellow. Um, and I'm big with, I, don't, I love black feet. For whatever reason, when I was first started breeding geckos the first time around, I would be the kind of guy that would be like in a Pet Smart or something like or a Petco because I can't I can't stand seeing animals in there because some of the some of, I'm not saying Petco and Pet Smart are bad at keeping animals. I just they have they have a reputation. So even not knowing the genetics, genetics, if I'd see an, a gecko, a leopard gecko with black feet. Um, I would always buy it, you know, 30 bucks, 40 bucks, whatever, you know, 60 bucks. It was not a loss to me. And I would mix it in with a project and uh, just see what kind of results I would get. That would be like the fun, the fun project. Like I'd have uh, the main project, I'd have, not have a fun project that I'd just like a crackerjack box, just kind of see what prize I would get out of it. But I always liked black feet for whatever reason. So that particular male, well, on Morph Market, the picture that I saw when it was advertised was this picture here. Um, and this and this was from um, Leopards in Texas, where I bought these animals from. So I, I ended up buying, the way they were advertised, it was like, kind of like all green animals or green hue, green this, green that. So like the dad, the mom, the offspring all had like a lot of green or green, a green cast to them. And a lot of them had dark tails or a lot of black in the tails. So this is the father of the animals I'm going to show you next. Um, again, darker feet. I love the amount of green in this, at least in this, the way the picture looks, it looks like it has a lot of green. Um, as you can see from the pic actual picture that I took of the animal, a little different than the actual morph market picture. And granted, this was right out of the container and only, you know, 15, 20 minutes, you know, adjusting to its new environment. And as you know, leopard geckos, are prone to change colors at seemingly within minutes. You know, they can go dark, they can go bright based on their mood, based on the temperature, whatever. Um, but all in all, this this gecko, even if, it, even if it doesn't have a lot of green in it, which it doesn't, um, it has a lot of black in the tail with a solid-ish body. I don't I don't care what color the body is on this male right now. I care about the black tail. The black tail is what I'm trying to infuse into this project with this animal. And with all the spots and stuff like that, um, so I'm just going to tell you one thing that I've discovered with black knights. If you see black knights that had cuz they they there's a lot of different variations of black knight colorations. Um at least I've seen at least a couple like some black knights will have this kind of dark muddled orange, whatever on the sides under the black. Some will have actually like a green cast along the sides. 
And uh, so anyway, I am interested in Black Knight females, especially that have that green cast. And I found two on Morph Market, but they were way, way overpriced. Well, I shouldn't say that. They were, they were just out of my budget when I was buying these other four animals because I couldn't buy both groups because uh, there were two two Black Knight females that I wanted um, that both had that green cast to them. And they don't have to be all black. They can have. I'll show you a picture of what I'm talking about. So the black is what I'm interested in this male. This is a proven breeder. Well, has bred once, I should say, and produced offspring. Um, so from the same – here, actually, I'll show you this. This particular black knight here on the left, this is the mom of two of the animals that I have. And as you can see, there's it's got a greenish cast along the sides. You can kind of see green here, green in the legs, kind of green at the back here. And other black knights will have kind of a, that darker orangey color along the side. So when I look for this project anyway, I look for black knights or animals that have been bred with black knights that have this green. Now, kind of the X factor with this project is – all of these animals, at least I believe all of them, have, have Max Snow in their genes. I found that Max Snow really amplifies, in these particular Black Knights, really amplifies the green. Um, so I just, that's kind of kind of a cool thing because all the animals that I've seen over the last few months on Morph Market or wherever, I always look to see what the genetics are, and 99% of the time, Max Snow is in there. So, that being said, um, th again, th this particular one here, this is the mom of one of the uh, males that I have. This is a, um, it's just really super spotted. It's a, it's a Black Knight Snow. Um, and this is a offspring of that one with the, the black tail. So this guy here is an off. This is the dad. Uh, the animals I got for this project have two different moms, but the same dad. So this dad, Super Snow, or just Max Snow, produced this little guy. I just thought this was the coolest looking gecko ever. Um, this is not what I thought it was going to be when I purchased it, and I'll go into that here in a minute. Um, but you can see the uh, no yellow, no orange in the tail. A uh, bl lot of black, black spots, a little bit of lavender, but a lot of black in the tail. Dark feet. Um, and you can see how there's like three shades of green in here. There's like a real deep army green, there's a lighter green, and then just a teeny little bit lighter than that as well. Um, and I love the spotting of the head. I love what the Max Snow does. It's, it's it's like the Cracker Jack thing like I referred to earlier. It's like you never know what you're going to get. But I've seen enough of these animals to know that consistently there's going to be spots, lots of black spots. So this this male I, I want to this, – this offspring I want to get into the project, this black olive project as well because of the color of the green and the amount of green that it has in it. Um, but when I, when I first, um, saw it, it was, it's actually the ad looked, looked like this. The ad looked like this, but then I was sent a picture, like, since this was a little bit, uh, the picture that was in the Morph Market ad was a little bit older picture. Uh, they, uh, he sent me a picture quote unquote from like the previous Thursday before whenever he shipped them. And this is kind of where it kind of went off the rails a little bit for me. And this is, this is going to be another, just a little mini rant um, about selling animals, whether they're ball pythons, leopard geckos and trying to make your animals look a certain way. I am a graphic designer. I have a, very extensive Photoshop background and other media. So I, I spot things pretty quickly. Uh, sometimes they're subtle, sometimes they're not. And in this case, I'll show you what I mean by not. I don't know that it's intentional. Um, it's just something that I've noticed. 
But as you can see from this picture, this this is the same animal, the same as that male offspring I just showed you. But in this picture, the tail looks almost black, and it really has like the color I was looking for because I had talked about this project with this person. And this is the picture they sent me after I'd asked for some updated pictures. You can see how deep the green is. That is that army olive drab camo green. Um, and this was like the poster child for the black olive project. I was like, I was super excited about this specific animal. So, um, again, this is the mom of the spotted one. This is the dad. Now, the other siblings, where's the pictures? Uh-oh, forgot the, hold on. One moment, please. I have to grab those because I can't leave them out because they are beautiful too. Uh, do, 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 do. Oops. Do, 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 do. All right. So here we go. These are also offspring of that same dad, that same animal, that first animal that I showed you. Um, but a different mother than the spotted one. And I'll show you the mother here in a second and why it's important to me to find another animal like the mother. Uh, and I did find one, but I just don't, I didn't have the money to grab it. Um, I'm sure there'll be others that'll pop up. But these two animals actually look very similar to this picture. When I took the pictures uh, when out of the box, they look a lot like this. So these Two particular animals. This one has more orange and yellow in the tail than I would like. Uh, this has orange coming into the tail, but it's closer to a solid green. This female here is closer to a um, solid green body. So that's what attracted me to these animals. Again, whether this all works or not, I have no idea. But persistence in line breeding sometimes it pays off and I'm hoping it pays off and I hope it doesn't take a hundred generations to get what I want. Um, but I'm going to have fun trying and I'm going to produce some awesome looking animals. I mean, this, this is an exciting project for me. I just, I love this, the idea of this project. So these two animals will be incorporated into that project. So remember same dad, different mom. This is the mom to those two. This is a Black Knight Max Snow Cross again. The cool thing, you can see the green. The green, the gray, or dark lavender, whatever you want to call it. Just a super, super amount of green. So if I could, if this other animal doesn't sell in a month or whatever and I'm able to get it, it looks very much like this animal. I love this female. So um, I will get a female like this to add into the project because this is, this is, to me, this is a gorgeous animal. But this is the mom of those two green ones. Um, so there you go. Okay, with that being said, um, I want to talk about the reality versus picture dilemma. And we've all been through it. If you've bought any kind of animals or any amount of animals, in your life, eventually you're going to come across some artificially manipulated images or slightly boosted images in some way, whether they're you're boosting a particular color channel or adding contrast, adding saturation, whatever the case is. Um, and it's easier to spot in natural light because natural light's pretty consistent. Um, especially if you're doing it in the same spot. And this person happened to do it in the same spot. So like, for example, if you look at um, like this mom picture I just showed you, if you look at the color of the hand, 
that's a kind of a natural 5500 Kelvin like temperature you know lights measured in temperature like on the Kelvin scale like 5500 ish is kind of what I shoot for in a lot of these animals uh, or a lot of pictures that I take uh, and if you look at the background keep this background in mind this must be out like in a parking lot or somewhere where there's like a asphalt but you can see it's kind of kind of sort of similar to the tail it's kind of like a grayish blah 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 uh, and if you look at this picture same parking lot hands a little brighter but it's still kind of gray the parking lot's still kind of gray and i would imagine this animal is that color here this this uh, red stripe reverse red stripe or whatever this is here um, but when you look at this green one for example here I'll just I made a side by side comparison here so if you look at these two animals they're the same animal how much different the color is how saturated this one on the right is and if you look at the hand the hand color like the orange or yellow or whatever has been bumped up. And if you look at the background that was gray before is now kind of a yellowish, orangish, a warmer tone. It's a warmer tone. So, and that's kind of what pushed this image into this dark, uh, amplifying the greens and the blacks, basically. So if you look at, um, let's see here. All right. Here's a good good example. So if you look at that's oh, behind my chair here in the picture, so you can't really see it. So look at the background here, kind of gray. Kind of warm, kind of yellow, kind of orange, whatever that is. So and the only reason I'm saying this is because this is the same hand from the same person in the same area outside. Uh, and if you look at the color of the hand here. Kind of orangey, whatever, reddish. And you look at the color of the hand here, more in the blue tones, you know, more, the, you know, normal range, what I would consider for an outside shot of a of human skin. Um, and same with this one. This one's a slightly darker than the last one. Could be a cloudy day, whatever. But, uh, but it's the same color temperature, same range. You know, it's not... It's not it doesn't have a warmer tone to it, so just keep that in mind when you're looking at animals on morph market. Always ask for more pictures. I always ask for more pictures, um, so you can see them in different lights. And as as I've said before, and as other people have said, and maybe from your own observations, you know that these animals will get darker or lighter depending on the temperature they're at, their mood, whatever, uh, their stress level, whatever the case is. Um, so back to the original reason why I'm doing this video. Uh, so the Firebold Clown Cross, um, this guy here, nice red stripe, nice green. So my, the four animals, I'll, I'll show you the four animals first, and then I'll explain how, what the initial pairings are going to be for these animals. All right, so this first one is a Clown Inferno Possible Het Raptor. They're all females. So Clown Inferno Possible Het Raptor. So Clown is in this animal. Clown is in the Firebolt animal. And if and if you want to take anything out of Clown, just, just green. Just remember green. Green mixed with orange. Green mixed with, like, um, black spots, orange, whatever. There's so many variations of the Clown now I, you know, and I think Matt's even working on the next generation or next version 2.0 of whatever. But anyway, for my purposes, clown to me just means a certain amount of green, uh, and there will be some orange. But I'm more particular to the green aspect. So, taking that firebolt clown male, um, we have this first animal, which is a clown infernal inferno possible het raptor. So, to me, and these are from um, from a place called Upstate Upstate Exotics in New York. 
Um, I'm sorry, but I can't remember the gentleman's name. I don't know if it's Nathan, but I think it starts with an N. Um, but super responsive guy, uh, easy to talk to, um, pretty straightforward. Was willing to work a deal if I bought all four animals. And um, so I went ahead and put a deposit on them just to reserve them because, God forbid, I don't want these four being sold out from out from under me. And it was done in a way where there's an invoice and there's recourse if something happens. So so I'm not sure what this animal is going to look like in person, but on the interwebs on Morph Market, it looked pretty green. It was a nice had a nice healthy ample amount of green but nice chunky healthy looking animal you know fat tail um, and I also like that he, he they sprinkled bee pollen in with the vitamins and stuff like that I'm a big fan of bee pollen and leopard geckos it's a shame it's so damn expensive so anyway uh, this is female number one uh, all these females are um, ready to breed so they're over 55 grams. Most of them are over a year and a half old. Um, so all ready to breed. So female number one. Female number two is a clown tangerine. Again, clown. Beautiful animal. Again, nice chunky looking animal, female. Lots of green. You can see all the green, all the green in here. Some decent amount of orange interesting pattern a couple black spots but that doesn't bother me um, again it's the amount of green uh, let's see it's the same animal uh, the next one is a pacific green clown inferno blood crossed with a purple head and if you know anything about purple heads those are actually kind of cool if do if do a little research do some um, googling on purple head leopard geckos and you'll and kind of follow the history of the purple head has an interesting history um so pacific green clown inferno to me the pacific greens were just you know like mandarin tangerines or tangerines that had a lot of green in them um, so this female this pacific specific pacific green she's a cutie um it's hard to tell in this picture because my monitors are set to a certain I'm so the way I like them I don't know how they'll they'll show up on the old YouTube interwebs um, some monitors will this will look a little slightly more orangey yellow like on my monitor it's a little more faded and has more green but you can see the green in the head and you can see the kind of the green bands um, on the back just thought it was a cute looking female especially for the money that I paid for it um, you can kind of see see the green a little bit in the background before I blow it up. I think when I blow it up, it kind of loses the green color for whatever reason. Um, but there's a decent amount of green in it. And then female number four is a also a Pacific green clown inferno blood crossed purple head. I believe these are siblings from different hatch, uh, from different clutches. Uh, at least that's my impression. This one has a lot more green, a lot deeper green. Um, I think it even shows up in this picture, this blown up picture here. But this animal has a tremendous amount of green. It has sort of the start of a, you can hardly hardly see it, but like a start of a, like a red stripe, a reverse stripe, whatever you want to call it, red stripe, uh, orange stripe. I hate saying red stripe because it's really not red. Um, but a beautiful animal nonetheless. And this one was, again, intriguing because it had the black feet. Loved the black feet. Don't know why. Usually, in my head, it just equals darker, darker darks, like darker greens, darker blacks, if that makes sense, darker lavenders. So lots of green, lots of green in this animal. So the intention or the at least the initial focus until I can pick up another animal or two for the Black Olive Project is to take this male here with with the black almost black tail or a lot of a lot of black in the tail sound like dumb and dumber a lot a lot um, black tail 
So this male, I'm probably going to pair with uh, this first animal here. And the only reason I say that is because this animal has, out of the four, has the least amount of orange or yellow in the tail. Um, so and it has already has some dark in the back. So going to see what pops out of that pairing, see what happens. So this animal will be exclusively for that male until that male's offspring are old enough to breed because I'm going to breed that male back to the female offspring, the one, the two that I showed you that are, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that were all green, almost all green. So the goal is for that male to be pa paired with its offspring. But for now, this is the mama, baby mama for that one. And then this male here, the Firebolt Clown Consolation Prize, if you will, this animal will, again, beautiful animal, will get paired with the other three females. So this Clown Tangerine, this Pacific Green Clown Inferno Blood Cross Purple Head siblings. So this gal here and this gal here. So lucky gals one and two, one and two and three, excuse me. So, you know, that's pretty much it. That's, I'm just kind of letting you inside of my head. Like I said, I, in the past, I just, I don't, I try not to be secretive. I know there's so many people that just like, just keep everything under wraps. Like they don't want to talk about their projects. They want to wait until they pop out babies until they actually start talking about their projects because they're afraid somebody's going to beat them to it or it's not going to work out the way they thought it was going to work out. I don't care. I really don't care. To me, this is fun. This is exciting. And I want you guys to enjoy the journey with me um, to see how, you know, my thought process when it, when it comes to starting a project and uh, how I look at pairing animals and how I look at animals when I buy them. Um, if you haven't figured it out, I just don't buy animals willy nilly. Um, I may have some, again, fun animals that I may just throw together. Uh, that's probably how the Skittles morph or whatever came about because somebody just threw a couple animals together and sorry for the person who created that morph. I don't mean to make light of it, but that's how morphs, morphs like that get started. You know, you're, you're it's total crapshoot. You're rolling the dice. So, I hope you got something out of that. Um, I'll, I'm going to start posting a few more shorts uh, to kind of fill in between these longer videos. If you have any comments, please make comments because YouTube won't put these videos out unless there's interaction, um, whether it's comments, sharing, combination of comments, sharing, liking, that kind of thing. Um, and again, congratulations, speaking of YouTube, to Frank over at Geeky Gecko Creations. For at least this morning, it was 102,000. So that is incredible because it wasn't that long ago. It was like a couple, three months ago. Um, Frank did a video. Like he, he had just eclipsed uh, Sosobic, Matt, Matt Berenick's uh, following. Because I think Matt had like 25 or 26,000 followers. And he had just eclipsed that. And that, like I said, that was not that long ago. Then he hit the 50,000 mark. Then he hit the 100,000 mark. So that is that is an awesome, awesome, awesome feat. Um, that truly means that you're in the influencer crowd now, Frank. Um, it means people are watching your stuff. They're listening. Um, and this whole thing is not about, you know, everybody agreeing on everything and everybody liking everything. Cause we're all going to have different opinions on, on things. Um, but it's that camaraderie, that community, um, that really ultimately matters. And so I hope you guys have a wonderful, I guess it's evening here. So wherever it's at, whatever time it is when you watch this, hope you have a wonderful day. Um, good luck with whatever projects or animals you're working with. And, um, until next time, keep calm and her partner.